Hey everybody, a few months ago, we took a look at whether or not you could play metal on a Fender Stratocaster. After trying several models, the verdict was pretty clear. As long as you have a humbucker or a hot rail, of course you can. They may sound a bit twanger than the newer Super Strats designed specifically for metal, but they still sound pretty awesome. Chronologically, however, we probably should have started with the Fender Telecaster. The Telecaster, or Tele for short, is still one of the most popular electric guitars to this day, despite being introduced back in the early 1950s. This guitar is known for being played by blues, jazz, and rock guitar players. Some of history's most important guitars, from Stevie Ray Vaughan to Mark Knopfler to Jeff Beck, all use the instrument because of the bright yet pleasing tone it offers, especially when being played clean or slightly overdriven. The first Tele was built in 1949 and predates the Stratocaster by several years. The Tele, in fact, was one of the first solid body electric guitars. Before that, guitarists primarily used acoustic guitars or semi-acoustic guitars called hollow bodies. What guitar players quickly found out was that these guitars gave a great amount of feedback as the amplifier was turned up due to the resonance coming from within the body. As far back as the 1920s, guitar players had been wiring up their instruments with primitive pickups and speakers to try and obtain more volume for live performances. Leo Fender ran an electronics repair shop called Fender's Radio Service and had been repairing guitars, amps, and wiring up pickups for musicians. Eventually, he began designing his own guitar. Leo's first design was in 1943, a crudely thrown together wooden guitar. Because it was a hollow body, the guitar offered considerably more sustain when run through an amplifier. It quickly became popular with gigging country musicians who asked to borrow the guitar for their shows. By 1949, Fender eventually came up with a working prototype of the Telecaster. In 1950, a single coil production model called the Esquire appeared. The Esquire had many production problems, most notably bent necks due to the absence of a truss rod. By late 1950, Fender improved the guitar considerably and released the Broadcaster. It featured two pickups and most importantly, a truss rod in the neck. Hey, good idea. Now, because Gretsch owned the name Broadcaster with a K instead of a C, Fender was forced to change the name and briefly the models had no name on the headstock, instead just featuring a Fender logo. These became known as the No-Caster guitars and are quite rare today. By 1951, Fender named the guitar the Telecaster after television, which was becoming incredibly popular in North America at the time. Funnily enough, Fender created the Stratocaster with the expectation to phase out the Tele over time. This obviously never happened. So we know that this guitar is great for blues, rock, and jazz, but does the bright twangy sound lend itself to metal? To demonstrate, I brought in my good friend, Mr. Christian Vey to play a couple of riffs and demonstrate how this guitar sounds with different pickups. We've got the same player, same amp, microphone, all that jazz. The only thing changing here is the guitar. We're gonna demo a high-end single coil Telecaster against a Jim Root model loaded with EMG humbuckers. Now, just for fun, go read how many comments on this video that say, Jim Root plays a Tele. Yeah, those would be from the people who didn't bother to watch the video. Boy, good thing they don't look dumb. Now, on the Strat video, we took some heat for using a hot rail pickup in the Strat body for the full-on metal mix. We got a lot of complaints like, well, that's not a real Strat. Now, while I feel that argument is more than just a little bit ridiculous, this time we did two versions of the full mix, one with a single coil and one with the Jim Root model. Of course, you can play metal with a guitar loaded with EMGs. Let's see how good it sounds on a single coil telly. We're tuned down to drop A on this and cranking up through a Mark II Rev Generator 120. Here we go.
Well, that was interesting. Obviously, the Jim Root model had a much flatter mid-range, but the single coil Tele really had something cool going on with the palm muting in the low end. The lead tone was gorgeous, of course. We were using the neck position pickup, and truthfully, I love the sound of single coils for that application. Now, in my own experience, I've had Tele's come into the studio over the years, and they've always been great. I love the feel of the neck, the fretwork, you name it. One of the fiercest sounding guitars I've ever had come in was a Tele loaded with a Seymour Duncan Hot Reel. I tried to track that guitar down for this video, but unfortunately I wasn't able to locate it. It would have been great to demo it here as well. However, I must say I was very impressed with the tone coming from both guitars that Christian Vey brought out. So after I did the Strat video, I found this nice tobacco burst made in Mexico version. And quite frankly, it's awesome. I can certainly see why these things are so popular. Now, after doing this video, I suddenly got the urge to go buy a telly. Yeah, I fucking cut my hand open.